But that would be like either the commercial font platforms are dead or it's okay because it's paid. But how weird is that? Today we're talking about Google Fonts. Yay. What's the issue? What's the problem with Google Fonts? Uh, this is a pretty German topic, I think, again. Right now, a lot of people are getting letters from lawyers and they want to sue them basically for using Google Fonts on their website. Why is that, Dominic? Because we're in Germany. <laughs> Because we're in Germany. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a very brief. No, but the thing is, there is the GDPR. The GDPR is done, was done by the European Union or like some part of it, right? And it's like a league. It's not a law because they don't have jurisdictional power in the countries, in the member states. But it's like a, um, I, don't, I don't even know the word. They just, it's a, like a guideline. <laughs> guideline, sort of. directive, yeah. something like that. Exactly. And um, every country is responsible for the implementation of this directive, whatever. And in Germany, we have certain laws that apply to that, but laws are only one part, right? Because the other thing is how laws are inter in interpreted. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and that's why you sometimes have to wait until you know for sure how something is being handled until there was a, a court ruling and this is the issue like yeah. recently there was a court ruling with regards to google fonts because somebody sued a, a company that was that had a website that was using google fonts for not wanting their private data in this case the ip address to be transmitted to Google, which is an international comp company that runs the servers in the United States. Um, so not part of the EU. So, yeah, and the court actually said, well, you're right, that's not legal, <laughs> sort of. And uh, now the um, company has to pay a fine for that because uh, it, like, because of the, the stress, the, the mental stress or something like that, That this yeah. put on the um, this sewer suing person, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the fine was like 125 euros, something like that. Something, yeah, something <laughs> like that. So uh, yeah, we are laughing, but um, yes, this actually caused so many people a to be afraid of having Google fonts on their website uh, as a German company. And B also has caused uh, many lawyers to think, yeah, we are now suing uh, other companies uh, for doing that. And that's actually why there's a whole lot of uh, action going on in, in this space. And um, basically for every client, we have to get rid of uh, Google fonts, um, right? Either yeah. get rid of Google fonts or only load Google fonts after you have consented, right? Yeah. But with Google Fonts, it not like we don't mean the fonts themselves, but more like loading those fonts directly from the Google server. It is okay to download those fonts and then upload them to your own server and then keep using them. Yes. And there are actually also plugins, uh, like WordPress plugins, that will do that for you, right? That will, because it's also a. Before the whole legal thing was an issue, um, of course, we talked about page speed optimization before. And this was also always the case that it is slower to request these fonts from an external service than it is or than it would be loading it from uh, your local um, server most of the time. Like this is not true all the time. Of course, you have to have a performance server and things need to go wrong, uh, need to be right and, and set up correctly. Um, but yeah, that's why initially these uh, plugins came along and now they all get basically hyped uh, um, again or probably have a lot more downloads than they used to have because it's also uh, from a legal standpoint. But again, this doesn't ensure that every Google font on your website is loaded locally. And this is, again, one potential problem, right? That depending on how you load a font, or um, like what this these plugins analyze, um, hmm. the Google font might be catched, 
might be caught or not yeah and then replaced or not yeah like the general font that the website uses rather easy to catch usually you know where that's registered but then there might be extra tools what was that was it also like some google service i think recapture yes that, that's exactly. then loading also google fronts but dynamically at a later point in time which again would be hard for a pl for some kind of plugin to catch that that would just automatically try blocking or rewriting stuff because it would need to go through also all the plugin code which typically it cannot access that easily exactly so there we already have like one topic where where it does get complicated right so usually like the easiest way you can um, hook up or that you can integrate a google font in your um Uh, a WordPress project is by using um, uh, like WP and Q style sheet, right? Or style styles, mm. and then just specifying the style sheet URL in this PHP function. And if this, if you use that, then it's really easy to replace that. And you can just download that before cache and like put it on your server, and, and you're done. But then, what about um, if you specify a link to a style sheet in your own styles? What if you load the, the style sheet via JavaScript? What if you, um, because also fonts are always twofold, right? The one thing is the CSS definition of the font. And the second is the font itself. So you usually, when you, when you load a font from Google, you integrate or include a style sheet, a CSS file in your, um, in your project. But this file, of course, is not the font itself. It's just the font face definition yeah. of your font so that you can use it. And then when you use that font face definition somewhere in your CSS, then uh, the actual font file will be downloaded, right? Right. So I, I, I had to laugh, I think, um, some minutes ago already, because I think if, if you're listening to this and you're listening basically to the first three minutes, you know everything you got to need, to, got, you got to know, right? Um, you explained it all just like almost perfectly i feel um but still like every every section there are things to dissect uh, mm. certainly and uh you made a deep dive into like the font loading how that works um already what was i about to, about to say about that huh yeah oh right i just i just thought what if like those fonts were installed on the computer then no request would be made to the Google server, even if that would be like the code directive somewhere. Just yeah. came to my mind. So it um, it pretty much depends. But maybe let's go back a little bit. So GDPR, what's important stuff there? That's that's like not a law. That's more like a directive that countries have to implement. But even I think the the German and the country-specific implementations, they implemented it that way, that uh, companies cannot sue other companies based on that law. I think they want to prevent that. Mm. So those letters coming in from, from lawyers right now, it's, it's not like a, another company or a competitor would sue you, but more like directly lawyers or people by private people. That's, that's also what, what this ruling... I think in Munich or somewhere it was uh, happened. It was like a, I think a private person suing a company for feeling, and they got right for feeling uncomfortable. So they were Distress. paid like around about a hundred euros for feeling uncomfortable, um, which is like I don't want to make fun of that. It's just like, in a sense, I feel it is kind of ridiculous because. Now we have this one decision regarding Google Fonts. And as a technical person, I feel this must be applied to many, many, many other cases. But no one does that because there's only this one ruling about Google Fonts. until yeah. and, and now we basically have to wait for future rulings. What, for what? For every single uh, US company that is offering a service or what? Or is there going to be a more general decision? Because what's the problem again? I think you explained it already. Um, the problem with loading Google fonts from Google. Maybe explain that yeah. again. Yeah. yeah the, the problem is that Google is a company that 
um, is registered in the United States and not in the EU. Also, the servers are in, in the United States. Well, they might be everywhere around the world, but still, it's a company that is processing the company that is processing your data your personal data is google mm -hmm. and google is in the united states and so it doesn't fall under the gdpr right and there are like these privacy shield things that are but this also has been ruled um unsufficient or something like that before mm -hmm. right so um the problem is that you when when somebody visits your website they have the intention of visiting your website that and you are supposed to Uh, um, stick to the European law and when you say okay you visit my website but I will redirect you and your private IP address which is a personal data uh, um, attribute I will send that to a company that is outside of the EU, uh, EU. and this is not okay And but now it, it gets really complicated again right Because it's not okay for something that is easily done differently. And I think that's that's really something I almost nowhere read about, but my full understanding of that, exactly. I think the, the ruling is only because it's too easy to provide a different solution. It's not generally, it's wrong. You must never load a font from a US server. But in this case, it's like it's too easy to to do it that way, so that there is no legitimate interest or reason like of the provider to do it this way, mm. because this is one of these exceptions is legitimate interest to to do it that way. I think they might have even decided that there would be legitimate interest if the company would be in the European Union, or maybe it wouldn't have come up with that. But that's just me guessing, basically. But yeah, that's what's so weird about it. Yes, and this makes things so complicated again when we talk about GDPR, right? Because the court has now ruled, okay, hosting a font on your local web server is like super easy, right? So Basically some kind yeah, of, yeah. Uh, uh, who, who says that, right? Yeah. So Google actually says, Google says in the docs, I think like I haven't looked at it for forever, but they used to say at least that um, please do not uh, um, locally host uh, the font files because you will get like an optimized experience uh, when you load that directly from our CDN. Uh, the font might change, right? You will have optimized, uh, like we constantly improve these. Um, maybe also the, the different, um, I think based on your user agent, they will um, uh, send out different, um, what is it called, like character sets, right? So if, if you, for example, have a, uh, an, an Asian, uh, um, or if you are in Asia and you will request that, it, will, it might send you a different font than when you're in, uh, the, in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and so on. So okay. Google actually says, don't do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't host a local. But the court now ruled, um, yeah, but it's easy to do that. So please do that, right? Yeah. Or like, or do, or are they saying, yeah, you don't have to use a Google font. Why don't you use a free font? A free font that, that you can download, right? Why don't you use another font? There are so many many fonts out, out there. So now the court is making design decisions, right? Yeah. So it, it's like really weird because the next point, and you already touched on that, like some of the Other Google services, of course, rely on Google fonts to being loaded, right? Because they want to have like a, a unified uh, um, a, a CI or whatever. And they like, we, you have recapture, which where there is like a small disclaimer and a pop up that opens. Um, and this loads a Google font. Now, would the As far as I am concerned, it is actually okay to load Google Recapture without the initial consent, because that's something for like that's a security reason. It's a necessary uh, like request that you have to make in order to keep your site secure, right? Mm -hmm. So I do have now legitimate interest of of using uh, Recapture, so I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to send the IP for. Google Recapture, but all, am I now also allowed to send it then to the same company for the font? For a different reason, kind of, right? Yeah. Yeah, but for a less important reason, it's okay or not okay. 
I'm actually, I think I'm not too sure if that's, if that should be okay to do, or I think I would, I would argue using the recapture pretty much depends on the type of implementation. Personally, I would also, to use the court's words, feel uncomfortable for my personal data being used to identify me. But if there, it can be ensured that the data is somehow encrypted or, or not used, uh, like hashed or, or whatsoever, then I think I would feel more fine with that. But we, we all have to, at the same time, then trust the provider. And that's, I think, one of those big issues with the privacy shield that basically it said, well, we as Europeans, we can't trust the American service providers with our data. That's mm. kind of the short answer that they are giving us. But st again, there are, yeah, this might be an exception where it might be okay. And no one can know for sure until there is some kind of court ruling about that. Mm -hmm. So basically, everyone can almost do what they want until they get sued from a private party. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird somehow? <laughs> Shouldn't there be like some kind of legislative that make sure that this can be also enforced. Hmm. I'm still confused, but sorry, I was, <laughs> I think I was, uh, yeah, was no, but, but let's, let's get, let's get back to the Google, uh, um, recapture, uh, stuff. Like, is it like in a, in a perfect setup, mm -hmm. you would ask for the, um, visitors consent. Yeah. And if they say yes, okay, then you would lo load the recapture. Right, but this is um, actually against the point because you want to monitor the entire traffic of everyone that visits your website, and especially of bots. Hmm. So if bots would always say, "Then yeah, no, I like don't um, don't accept the cookie," um, then we wouldn't load recapture, and then yep. the whole um, security thing wouldn't work anymore. That's why, to me, there is a legitimate interest or a justified interest and a, necess a necessity to load the script and to send that. You could uh, argue, okay, then um, don't use Google for that. Use something else, mm. right? But what are the alternatives? Unfortunately, the best, the technically most advanced solutions typically come out of the US mm. in this regard. So, What is my alternative now? The alternative is to implement some, either find a different service that maybe charges money for that and uh, who's going to pay for that then again on a monthly basis. Then uh, uh, like, or there are other um, like things you can use, other strategies instead of a, um, a, a capture um, like honeypots or, or something like that that you could use. But it's not the same, right? Hmm. So... So then it's okay. Let's let's just hypothetically say that by law it's okay to do that because before like if there was a court ruling if somebody sued some company for using recapture I think there would be enough points that you can make why you should use that why this is necessary, right? Yeah. So and, and then all of a sudden it's okay. But because And Google recapture, sorry, just yeah. one one more thing. Please. Because Google recapture loads a Google font. Yeah. So if I'm now allowed to send your IP address to Google because of that, of the recapture, am I then also allowed to send it because of the fonts? Be because changing that is not possible. Like, Does that change easily. the context? Is it okay yeah. when you do it both or only one of them? Or are you, yeah, kind of the question, right? You're leading up to. Yeah. So recapture just for those who don't know they have this this plugin the service where which which prevents you from getting spam requests on your website like when you have a contact form and so on that 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 this Google service would identify try to identify spammers probably everyone has seen these things that pop up at some point where you have to uh click on all 
yeah. all cars on, on you get like nine images nine tiles. and then yeah. it says like click on this and then you have to click it but this and is the, only like this is this should only or usually it only picks up nowadays when google has a doubt about you being a real person because uh, usually it tries to identify you identify you with this invisible mode without showing yeah. you anything but tracking your behavior um Yeah, and that's where it gets kind of sketchy already. <laughs> well, who, who, what are they actually doing? Uh, to what extent, which data are, you, are they using? But truly at the same time, yeah, it can only be effective that they try to monitor the user to, to, to understand if they're a real user. Mm -hmm. I think they're probably like also measuring just like the, the, the page spent on a time, the irregularities of using the cursor or a keyboard or clicking elements and so on, that, that it should feel more, it should feel natural and not feel like a bot that just like does okay. certain steps. But there, like, okay, maybe you have, you know, there's like a big difference or um, like when Google moved from uh, recapture version two to recapture version three, mm -hmm. like the whole um, architecture changed. Actually, I think invisible mode or the, this by default invisible was introduced in version three, right? Yeah. So the thing is, version two. I don't know if it's deprecated or not, um, because if it was deprecated, and you would and they would say, yeah, the only thing, um, or no, let's put it the other way. If it was not deprecated, mm -hmm. then you could argue, yeah, you don't need to use recapture version three that does like automate automated checks. But you could use version two and just always display uh, these um, uh, images or challenges yeah. that you have to write. And this would be okay then because you could implement that in a way where you say, okay, if you want to submit this form, um, you have to agree to Google's uh, um, terms of service. Then you have one click and then the capture comes. And this makes like the whole user experience and the whole usability of the site crappy, right? And this is getting more and more towards this, what we already said in our GDPR uh, um, episode, where we said, yeah, the usability or the user experience suffered, mm -hmm. like, because we now have like this cookie banner all the time, right? Before you have, can yeah. view the content on a website. And now like there are more things. And I, While I understand that from a legal point of view, maybe this is the very correct way to do it, but this also means that like, we are making things more inconvenient for people visiting. It's not just right? inconvenient, but like it's a matter of, of uh, competitiveness in terms of mm. businesses and a matter of costs, like implementing things. Um, yeah. Thinking about like when the... German GDPR implementation was introduced. Um, I think some company also tried to sue another company because this other company did not implement all the things legally the right way yet. And they said, well, we have a disadvantage now because this other company didn't have to spend those thousands of euros that we invested in getting a consultant and doing all these steps to comply with those guidelines. But I think it was still outruled that, that they said, it's not possible. You can't sue another company for that. Well, then that's mm. their problem and their risk. But at the same time, I think like even today, it would be possible to, to implement something like this. It's just like uh, much more effort, right? You, we could implement that when you accept the cookie banner, then we act activate this better spam tracking And if you don't accept it, then we implement some kind of fallback uh, mm. honeypot thing, which might not, not be that effective. But, but then suddenly you have to implement two different solutions to be just as good as other companies and not just like international competition, but even like you got to look at what your co competitors in your country, for example, are doing. And I, I, I think like many aren't doing it that way so it's it sounds wrong but i think like being really good in terms of privacy can be right now a competitive disadvantage and that shouldn't be the way mm. i'm all in for privacy first but i'm all in for solutions that work 
um, that still work <laughs> and and don't make things more complicated but instead like more more simple maybe just like with privacy first tracking with plausible one of my favorites and stuff like that instead of google analytics but for captures for spam detection i don't know i don't feel there is this one standard there are probably tons of solutions out there but somehow the google recapture seems to be the most effective and most uh, easy to implement it at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious. I'd be very curious to have a court rule about this. Yeah. Yeah. This is also the chance for like uh, actually companies or for, for startups or whatever to take all of the <laughs> American... <laughs> Or non-EU uh, uh, like technical innovation, and just do the same thing hosted in Europe by a European company, right? So basically, and, taking the Zamba uh, copycat yeah. concept <laughs> and bring that to privacy-first <laughs> technology, yes. bring that to Europe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When then yeah. probably, and, and probably you you see some of that popping up, right? Yeah, but not not on a large scale and not for like really niche markets and that's a problem as well right because with this niche market also your um you have a, 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 a potentially no potentially you have the same user base right but um you will first at the beginning you'll only um attract like really a, a lot smaller target group right because people that are interested in that and that actually look for a privacy um conform or gdpr uh, conform solution in in a certain area and yeah and then it needs to be free at the beginning right because you know although the saying is if you don't pay for it you pay with your private data mm. right so um nobody or a lot of people do not really care at the beginning right i just Maybe this will change, but maybe this Hopefully. is also a total German thing, and uh, in other countries you don't have these discussions, yeah, or these issues. Yeah, just like Mastodon, kind of is a German. It's it's a German company, a German oh. G G M B H, so a non-profit yeah. Yeah. company from a guy who's living in Berlin, I think. I just and, know way too little about Mastodon, I have to admit. I um, Yeah, I, like you mentioned that recently, yeah, that, hey, this is the new uh, Twitter competitor, kind of. And they've been around for like a long time, and mm. they have this distributed uh, approach where you can host the server on your own, and then the you have an inbox and an outbox, and, and the, you can fetch those messages and, and share them with other service, services. And then mm. I, I, it's a really cool concept, and puts also in a sense like uh does it put privacy first non-profit first mm. and i felt this is this is becoming really huge right now but this might be also very german and eu based biased biased mm. uh, view on on things yeah what is the name for for this kind of things fatty fediverse yeah right? i think that's the word yeah. yeah federated distributed content networks whatever yeah i just learned about Sorry. it that it's like basically like a, a protocol also based on that mm -hmm. or yeah how, how to exchange uh, uh messages with this fediverse approach it's pretty cool yeah. okay but it has nothing to do with google fonts no. although they <laughs> they probably <laughs> they probably don't use google fonts on their website probably not <laughs> or not at least I'm like loaded from an external source I mean, we could talk about fonts, <laughs> fonts in general. Like, why, why is it so easy, like loading Google fonts, and why, like, is that actually like I have no statistics for that? But how many percent of all websites use Google fonts? I think it should be rather high because I also really like these days, like when designers uh, are creating a website. They are typically asked to create that with a web font, hmm. and 
I think the most, first thing that comes to most people's mind is is the Google phones. Google phones yeah. If you don't want to pay for it, go for Google phones. Years and years ago, right. it was all different. We had the other, the problem was the other way around. We got always designs mm -hmm. with some kind of weird fonts that didn't <laughs> even offer a web font license. And yeah. it was like Do all you remember special what we did? fonts. And oh, now that you the, say uh, it. Yes, the, the tool, online tool. But actually, like, Of course, uh, only if the license allowed it, or if there sometimes there wasn't even yeah. a license if you could use it. So if there was no license, then how is it? If it, if there is no license, it's free to use. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. But do you know no, what the name was? Like, have have you been like? Did you just think about the same thing that I was thinking? No, about? I like I the, don't. But feel free no. to go to go ahead. Yeah, there was this tool, online tool. I don't know if this still exists. Font Squirrel. Mm -hmm. And in Font Squirrel, you could upload a TTF, which was like the, or OTF mm -hmm. or whatever. And then you could download, uh, like convert it to a web, uh, say, fonts and uh, make adjustments to it. You got the CSS. Like this was a really awesome tool back then. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. But I think we only used it for fonts where we still had the license, but somehow there was no official web font. I think there was this period in time yeah. when fonts didn't, font yeah. providers did give you a license. But no real web font, like it had yeah, to be when, converted differently, or just like yeah. the font file was really large and you only needed a subset uh, and only a subset of characters and no, mm. not all the characters that. The, uh, yeah, most of the times it was even like a corporate font, right? Where the co where the company, yeah, either they created the font themselves, <laughs> even yeah, like or where, was it VW uh, and, and companies yeah. like that? Yeah, right. Yeah. Or where they did have licenses to do okay but that's anything. us talking okay. about like okay. 10 yeah. years ago again yes. uh, still funny i was also thinking about another other approaches where we took screenshots kind of of individual letters because some licenses allowed to use it as a produced graphic but not as a font directly so we created mm -hmm. screenshots of letters and reassembled those again <laughs> into into words and stuff like that with css really accessible right because uh, i think Uh, the font uh, license owners, they just didn't want that the font was freely available for download, for distribution, but they were still mm. okay with the font being used. Yeah. But then we, yeah, I, I was coming up with this because I remember that there was were all these weird fonts that didn't even have a license, which we couldn't use because even if there is no license, that doesn't mean you can use it um, for sure. But um, we then had to tell designers uh, to to use a different font and to change lots of things about their designs. But at some point, then there were new uh, paid platforms coming out with providing fonts for like a monthly subscription. And there are various ways to implement that. Um, I think some give you the font directly and you just have to implement a script, kind of a tracking script on your website so they can count the visitors mm -hmm. on your page Uh, and ensure that you're yeah, using that font still is legit or according to their plans. But other providers just like say, you have to load the font also from our servers. So this still happens, right? We still mm. have services like Typekit. Is, is that from Adobe? Did they buy it? Or is Adobe I having so, a yeah. different... I think probably, probably Adobe. No. Um, but yeah, then you load a font from a US based server hmm. and it's and okay you paid for that even and you pay for that and i think to my understanding to the, uh, regarding this code reading, that's okay really because you don't have you don't have an easy uh, alternative uh, because you're not allowed to use it differently right you you are okay. not allowed to download the font and just serve it from your own server you have to connect it that way so the only alternative would be you have to use another font. And I think no one decided upon th that yet, but that would be like either you are that means now all the commercial font platforms are dead in Europe or at least in Germany because you must not use it anymore or only after consent, but loading a font after consent if it's like a significant font to design. I think no one would do that. So either that would be dying now or... Uh, you have to you can interpret it in a way that you say it's okay because it's paid but how weird is that if it's free if it's hmm. and if it would be open source 
it's 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 dangerous you're not allowed but if it's paid okay, it's okay but then then i have to like then it would be okay if google changed their terms of service saying these are free to use but you have to uh, um like include them via our cdn interesting then like the whole suing wouldn't work anymore yeah because you cannot download i thought it was like no it's so easy to use another font or something like that i think this was um mostly the um like, i think the, the, the problem with that is like no one ever said it in detail yeah. exactly like that okay. it's just like it's more not not saying you can do this or or that but more like uh, hey it's um yeah we we don't we don't grant you what you're asking for because i think when when they ruled uh, made this court ruling then the other party the company they were how do you say they they uh einspruch erheben translate that for me so they said basically right. after that it's not hey we disagree and um, because they said we think we have legitimate interest, and they, the court then again said no, we don't think you have. Mm -hmm. I think okay. they didn't really explain because this and that, okay. probably to some but extent. But if they, yeah, okay, okay, wow, yeah, see, like, but that's really the interesting part that I find about that or that font topic, where I would see, I would love to see people discuss about that. Maybe there's an easy answer then please, anyone hearing this, just let me know. But I haven't met anyone yet or read anything or heard anything uh, giving a very clear directive on this, saying, yeah, that's okay because, or that's not okay because. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's the kind of landscape we're living in right now. We just got to wait. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Um, follow the law or the rulings. And other than that, we got to wait for for new rulings. Mm -hmm. But mostly, I think everyone should try to do what's best in their own knowledge and what their whatever you, you believe is should be the right thing. I think that's what you should follow. But this <laughs> can be so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Yes.